2 billion cans sold, 75 countries, 900 million pounds of colorful dough. Would you believe this global phenomenon started as a failing cleaning product? This is how a desperate attempt to save a dying company turned into one of the most successful toys in history. The unexpected origins Back in the 1930s, nobody could have predicted that a wallpaper cleaner would transform into a global phenomenon. In Cincinnati, Ohio, a company called Koodle Products was making a putty-like substance to clean coal residue off wallpaper. Not exactly the most exciting start for a toy, but here's where it gets interesting. Kay Zufall, a nursery school teacher, was frustrated with how hard the modeling clay was for her students to use. When her brother-in-law, Joe McVicker, who worked at Koodle, showed her this wallpaper cleaning putty, something clicked. She saw potential where others saw just a cleaning product. After some tweaking to make it non-toxic and more kid-friendly, this cleaning compound transformed into what we now know as Play-Doh. The funny part? The McVickers initially wanted to call it Rainbow Modeling Compound. Thank goodness Kay and her husband came up with the catchier name Play-Doh. The product hit store shelves in 1956, and while it was first marketed only to schools, word spread quickly about this amazing new modeling compound. The early days of success. The journey from wallpaper cleaner to toy wasn't just luck, it took some serious marketing. In 1956, Joe McVicker took a bold step and demonstrated Play-Doh at an educational convention for school supply manufacturers. That's when things really started to take off. Woodward & Lothrop, a department store in Washington, D.C., became one of the first retailers to stock the product. The original Play-Doh came in just one color, off-white, but in 1957, they made a game-changing decision to release red, blue, and green versions. The following year, they added white to the lineup. The company also made a brilliant move by advertising on popular children's TV shows like Captain Kangaroo, Ding Dong School, and Romper Room. By 1958, Play-Doh sales had skyrocketed to nearly $3 million. That was huge for something that started as a cleaning product. The Secret Recipe But what exactly is in this weird putty thing that children's love? While the exact recipe is closely guarded like KFC chicken, we do know the basic ingredients. It's primarily a mixture of water, salt, and flour, but there's a lot more science behind it than you might think. The magic starts with starch, which acts like tiny, microscopic sponges. When mixed with warm water, these starch molecules swell up and create a gel-like network. That's what gives Play-Doh its structure. But it's not as simple as mixing flour and water. There's a whole bunch of clever additives that make it special. Some ingredients work as lubricants, helping the dough slide smoothly between your fingers. That's why it doesn't stick like regular dough. While others act as preservatives to keep it fresh, and there are even special ingredients that prevent it from drying out too quickly. And then there's that signature scent. In fact, it's so iconic that Hasbro actually patented it in 2018. They describe it as a sweet, slightly musky vanilla-like fragrance with slight overtones of cherry and the natural smell of a salted wheat-based dough. The science behind Play-Doh. The reason Play-Doh feels so unique is all about the science of starches. You see, starch comes in two types, amylose and amylopectin. The wheat starch used in Play-Doh contains about 25% amylose and 75% amylopectin, the perfect ratio for that right consistency. When you're playing with Play-Doh, there's actually some pretty complex chemistry happening right in your hands. The amylose helps make it sturdy enough to hold shapes, while the amylopectin prevents it from getting too hard. They've also added special ingredients called surfactants, Think of them as tiny mediators that help all the other ingredients play together. Have you noticed Play-Doh dries out if you leave it uncovered overnight? That's because the water starts to evaporate, leaving behind all those dry ingredients. But when it's fresh and properly stored, all these components work together to create that perfect, pliable texture we know. The manufacturing. Moving from the recipe to the factory floor, this is where the real magic happens. Giant mixers, kind of like enormous kitchen mixers, precisely combine all those ingredients. The process starts with mixing the dry ingredients and flavorings. Just like baking a cake, but on a massive scale. And here's a cool fact. Different colors need different amounts of water to achieve the perfect consistency. 
A vibrant red might need more water than a sunny yellow to get that perfect Play-Doh feel. But overall, they stick to a pretty specific ratio, about 70% dry ingredients to 30% water. Once everything's mixed together, the compound gets heated to around 70 degrees Celsius for a short while. This temperature is crucial. It's just enough to activate all those binding properties we talked about earlier. And then there's quality control. Throughout the process, technicians are constantly checking the consistency, texture, and color. They even run samples through metal detectors to make sure no tiny metal bits accidentally got mixed in during production. From factory to fun, the final steps of the process are pretty fascinating. A long conveyor belt lined with empty Play-Doh containers wait to be filled. A machine, nicknamed the Stuffer, scoops out perfectly measured blobs of the warm compound and drops them into each container. Right behind it, a robotic arm precisely places lids on each tub. A special compression roller, think of it like a giant rolling pin, rolls over the sealed containers to create a satisfying airtight seal. This seal is super important. It's what keeps the Play-Doh from drying out before it reaches the customer. Innovation and evolution. Over the years, Play-Doh hasn't just stuck to basic modeling compound, it's constantly evolving. One of the biggest game changers came in 1960 with the introduction of the Play-Doh Fun Factory. This genius invention let kids extrude the compound into all sorts of fun shapes, kind of like a pasta maker for Play-Doh. Then came other cool innovations, like the Fuzzy Pumper Barber and Beauty Shop in 1977 and the Mop Top Hair Shop in 1986. These sets let kids style hair made from Play-Doh. In 2012, they introduced Play-Doh Plus, a lighter and softer version of the classic compound. The numbers are pretty mind-blowing, too. Since 1956, they produced more than 2 billion cans of Play-Doh. That's about 900 million pounds of modeling compound. Today, they make about 95 million cans every year, and you can find it in 75 countries around the world. The cultural impact. Play-Doh has become such a huge part of our culture that it's earned some pretty impressive recognition. In 1998, it was inducted into the National Toy Hall of Fame in Rochester, New York. In 2003, the Toy Industry Association included it in their Century of Toys list, a collection of the 100 most memorable and creative toys of the 20th century. The compound's iconic status doesn't stop there. Remember that distinctive smell we talked about? It's so beloved that in celebration of Play-Doh's 50th anniversary, they actually created a limited edition perfume inspired by it. They designed it for highly creative people who seek a whimsical scent reminiscent of their childhood. It's amazing to think how far Play-Doh has come from its beginnings as a wallpaper cleaner. This simple modeling compound has sparked creativity in generations of kids, become a cultural icon, and continues to evolve with new colors and playsets. The next time you pop open a fresh can of Play-Doh, remember, you're not just holding a toy, you're holding a piece of history that's been bringing joy to people for over 65 years. And that smell? Well, now you know it's not just any scent. It's a patented piece of childhood magic. If you enjoyed learning about the magic behind Play-Doh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us create more content like this. What was the coolest thing you ever made with Play-Doh? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to catch more fascinating stories about how everyday things are made. Until next time.